Welcome to episode 5 of my Keigo mini series. In episodes 1 to 3, I talked about the three main types of Keigo, namely Teineigo, Sonkeigo, and Kenjogo. In episode 4, I listed the majority of the irregular verbs in Sonkeigo and Kenjogo. In this episode, I will compare and contrast the three types of Keigo. The similarities, however, are limited in number, so this video will focus primarily on the differences between them. Most of the information included in this video was already covered in the previous episodes, so if you are confident about which type of keigo to use in any given situation, then feel free to skip this episode. Similarities The main commonality between the three types of keigo lies in their function or purpose, that is, why we use them. In short, we use keigo in order to be polite and respectful to other people. In addition, we should use these types of keigo in the same set of situations, which implies that teineigo, sonkeigo, and kenjogo are usually used together. So, in what sorts of situations do we use them? Here's a list of the types of people you should use keigo towards, and the types of situations in which you should speak politely. 1. Towards people who are older than you. 2. Towards your superiors at work, or your senpai. 3. Towards your colleagues you're not friends with. 4. Towards adults that you don't know well. 5. When you are speaking in public, in front of a group of people you're not friends with. 7. When you are writing to someone you don't know well, either in a letter, an email, or online. And here's a list of the types of people you normally don't use keigo towards, and the types of situations where keigo is normally not expected. 1. Towards small children. 2. Towards your family members, unless your parents are strict and expect you to speak formally, and provided that you and your family are conversing amongst yourselves. 3. Towards your friends, although some people expect you to speak formally to them if they are senpai to you, even in the context of a friendly conversation. Differences We now move on to the differences. Firstly, let's contrast teineigo and the other two types of keigo. Teineigo differs from the other two types of keigo in that it does not raise or lower anyone's social status. Rather, its function is to lay the foundation for a pleasant, polite conversation for everyone involved. Most importantly, the use of teinego is a necessary condition for politeness, and on top of this foundation of politeness, we add sonkeigo and kenjogo in order to clarify the different social status. Moreover, although I said earlier that these three types of keigo are usually used together, this is not always the case, since it is possible to use only teinego if you are not talking to or about any particular individual. For example, you could be writing a blog post about amphibians, Naturally, there wouldn't be too many mentions of humans, but you could still end your sentences with desu and masu. Next, we are going to contrast sonkeigo and kenjogo. To put it simply, sonkeigo implies a higher social status, whereas kenjogo implies a lower social status. What this means is that sonkeigo is usually used when referring to the actions or states of someone you do or should respect. Earlier in the video, I already listed the types of people you should show respect towards. So when you are talking to your teacher, for instance, if she says something, this saying action should be described as sensei ga nani ka oshatta. The teacher said something, where osharu is the sonkeigo form of you to say. If, on the other hand, you want to talk about your own action, for example, when you said something to your teacher, you should use kenjogo instead, as in watashi ga sensei ni nani ka o I said something to the teacher. Moshiageru here is the kenjogo form of you to say. So basically, the difference between sonkeigo and kenjogo comes down to whether you are talking about someone you respect or yourself, respectively. This statement, however, is a bit of an oversimplification. For example, depending on the situation you're in, you may have to use either sonkeigo or kenjogo towards your superior at work. Recall that normally, you are supposed to address your boss using sonkeigo. However, if you and your boss are collectively speaking to a client, then you need to use kenjogo to describe the actions and states of both yourself and your boss while addressing the client using sonkeigo. When multiple people who belong to different social groups are involved, sonkeigo and kenjogo divide the people into two sides, us versus them. People on the them side normally have a higher social status than people on the us side. For instance, you and your boss are talking before an important meeting with a client. In this case, you and your boss belong to the same company, so there are no sides, and your boss has a higher social status than you within the company, so sonkeigo should be selected. During the meeting with a client, on the other hand, the client belongs to a different company, which gives rise to the us versus them dichotomy. The client belongs to the them side and therefore needs to be addressed using sonkeigo. 
your boss, in contrast, belongs to the us side this time. Even though the boss has a higher social status than you within the company, insofar as the client is participating in the same conversation, the boss needs to be addressed using Kenjogo. One complication, however, is that from the perspective of the client, you and your boss belong to the them side who need to be respected. So the client will likely use Sonkeigo towards you and use Kenjogo when referring to herself. The same thing happens when two strangers of equal social status converse. Socially, it is expected that any given person should be respectful to a stranger, and this rule applies to both parties. Therefore, person A should use Sonkeigo towards person B and vice versa. Likewise, both person A and person B should use Kenjogo when referring to themselves. Here's a recap. 1. Teneigo is the default polite language. If the use of Sonkeigo and Kenjogo is expected, then Teneigo is also expected. 2. Sonkeigo implies a higher social status, whereas Kenjogo implies a lower social status. 3. In an asymmetric social relationship, where A has a higher social status than B, A does not need to use Keigo towards B, but B should use Teneigo at all times, Sonkeigo towards A, and Kenjogo reflexively. 4. In a symmetric social relationship, where A and B have equal social status, the use of Sonkeigo is mutual, and Kenjogo should also be used reflexively by both A and B. 5. In a situation where there is a divide between the us side and the them side, Sonkeigo should be used towards people on the them side, and Kenjogo towards the people on the us side, in the presence of someone from the them side. This is the end of this video. In the next episode of this series, I will talk about two extra types of Keigo. See you next time.